Good morning. You just got done watching a video of Russia's newest toy that they're putting on the battlefield in Ukraine. Absolutely crazy helicopter here. It's it's an unmanned drone, essentially. Uh, this thing has some pretty impressive capabilities. So uh, you see, saw the video of it in action. Here's a little bit about uh, about the uh, helicopter. This is on War News 24-7. Of course, I'll put the link and the description in the first comment. Wow. It says Russia appears to have started aerial or serial production sorry, of unmanned attack helicopters of the termite type, which will be equipped with guided munitions, as it became known during the visit of Dmitry Medvedev to an industrial complex in Moscow. In particular, the deputy chairman of the Security Council of Russia visited an unmanned aerial systems and vehicle manufacturing plant in Rodnevo and saw up close the progress of the UAV production processes as seen in the footage he published with analysts focusing on the unmanned helicopter of the Strela company. I believe that's Strela. According to open information sources, the termite has a maximum takeoff weight of 450 kilograms, can develop a top speed of 150 kilometers with a maximum flight height of 3,500 meters. <clears throat> it can also be equipped with either S8L type guided rockets, which incorporate a semi-active laser guidance system, a high explosive warhead, and have a maximum range of up to six kilometers or a Vicar type anti-tank missile. It also has the operational range of 430 kilometers with a full load of ammunition. It is noted that the company has taken on a contract for the production of the specific unmanned helicopters from 2021, but no further information is publicly known about the number to deliver. So this is uh, the video that you saw to start out with, I will show that again in just a moment. This is the other video he's talking about with uh, with Medvedev speaking about the uh, about the um, helicopter and uh, visiting the um, the manufacturing plant. So apparently, apparently they're pretty well ready. I do have another um, another thing to show you here. There was a um, there was a post on there that showed this and it also had this information which includes a little bit more uh, than what the article did most of it is all uh, pretty much the same um, it says um, uh, okay here's here's the other information the one 185 kilogram BAS 200 can fly in automatic mode for up to four hours with a load of up to 50 kilograms the flight range with a full load is 430 kilometers. It is capable of capable of reaching speeds of up to 160 kilometers per hour and flying at altitudes of up to 3,500 meters. Um, <clears throat> and then this talks about the weapons that it can carry. It does say the audio audio signature of the drone is uh, is high. It's gasoline powered. I'm sure it uh, does make quite a bit of noise. Uh, however. I can only imagine this being deployed on the battlefield. And it goes right with what I was saying time and time again, that this is where we are headed. We are headed to a technological war. We are headed to a war where there's going to be a lot of automation and robotics doing the fighting. So now, how do you win a war that way? And I, I've kind of been asking myself that question here as of late. How do you tell who's a winner in a war when it's just robots fighting? I mean, do you do you actually have some type of a contest set up? Is it actually a game of catch, capture the flag? What is it that you do? Um, how is it that humanity, if you want to call it humanity, um, I don't know if you could call it civilization either, uh, not if they just want to continue killing each other. Um, to stake claims. And to what? Haven't the countries been decided long ago? Uh, other than 
a few skirmishes, some of them understandable. Most of the the world, I believe, has pretty much been, you know, called dibs on. So, and if anybody knows of anywhere that hasn't, let me know, because, uh, well, you know, we might have to dib it up. Anyway, I doubt you're going to find anything. And if you do, it's not going to be anything livable or hospitable. Anyway, this is definitely something to keep uh, an eye on. Uh, as I've been saying, again, <laughs> uh, for quite some time, I've been telling you that you're going to see more and more equipment for the first time uh, being unveiled in the uh, in the Ukraine situation uh, because it's a test bed for a lot of these weapons manufacturers. And um, this, like I say, this particular... This particular installment of uh, armament is, is, it's concerning. Could you imagine, could you imagine uh, how many tanks that these things could wipe out? I mean, you just have a ton of them. You had a couple hundred of these, how big of a line of tanks could a couple hundred of these automated robotic drones take out? Hmm. Again, who wins and how do you tell at that point when it's no longer about loss of life? How do you know who wins without wiping out large amounts of the populace and occupying the territory? Aside from that, what would declare a winner? It's kind of concerning, really. And I, I haven't been really able to answer the question, but I every way that I, I look that it could go doesn't end well for the populace. See, they 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 love to try to take the high road in in war and say that no, they don't target the civilian population, but that's not true. The mindset very, very often is that by targeting the population, you're going to convince the population to put pressure on their governments to quote unquote, do right. That's, that's the notion, right? And the entire time uh, that they're killing innocents, all they're doing is building up more resistance, just like the situ situation unveiling uh, with Israel and Hamas. Right, you're not ever going to be able to take out Hamas. Why? Because it's it's an idea. It's not you can't kill Hamas. It's an idea. You can't kill an idea. What you can do is stop giving people reason to take that path. But that's not happening yet. So anyway, <clears throat> different subject for different time. Keep an eye out for this kind of stuff because you're going to, like I say, you're going to see it really escalate. And I think what a lot of countries are doing is they're kind of trying to warn each other about the, you know, what weapons they've got to pull out of their, their sleeve. And uh, this is just another one of those. So anyway, I'll show you the video again in closing. I hope you have a great day. Hope to see you for the live show. As always, shalom.